Phyllis Wheatley is known for being the first African-American woman to publish a book, the first African-American woman to earn a living from her writings, and the first woman writer encouraged and financed by a group of other women. Her poetry was later reprinted in the 1830s by abolitionists due to her powerful ideas that stood against the institution of slavery. Phyllis Wheatley was born in Senegal in 1753 and was raised in Africa by parents who were sun worshippers. At the age of seven or eight, she was sold as a slave and brought to America on a ship called the Phyllis, which is how she got her name. She was brought to Boston, Massachusetts and was luckily purchased by John and Susanna Wheatley. The Wheatley family welcomed her as a part of her family and were a great influence in her success. Phyllis was given a wonderful education and did not have many duties around the house. It was very uncommon for African Americans to even be educated, but her owner's daughter, Mary, taught her how to read and write as well as Latin and Greek. Mary encouraged Phyllis to use her gift of poetry and pushed her to write. Her first poem was published when she was 12 and it was O. Messrs. Hussey and Coffin. It was published by Newport Mercury. The publication of her book of poetry, Poems, was backed by the finances and encouragement of Countess Huntington Selena Hastings, who was a friend of the Wheatleys. Wheatley did not write about the injustice of slavery. Instead, she made her newfound faith, Christianity, the center of her writing. She was greatly influenced by the Bible, Alexander Pope, John Milton, and Thomas Gray. Her faith in God is depicted in her first poem where she speaks of two faithful Christians who drown at sea. In the 1770s, it was very uncommon for women, especially African American women, to be educated, and that brought about suspicion among her readers about whether she had truly written her poems. In 1773, she published a collection of her poems in London and had a very unusual introduction to the volume. It was an attestation by 17 men of Boston that she had indeed written the poems herself. The introduction read, We, whose names are underwritten, do assure the world that the poems specified in the following page were, as we verily believe, written by Phyllis, a young Negro girl who was but a few years since brought an uncultivated barbarian from Africa and has ever since been and now is under the disadvantage of serving as a slave in a family in this town. She has been examined by some of the best judges and is thought qualified to write them. Her poem's popularity gained her freedom from slavery on October 18, 1773. After publishing her book in London, she returned to America and was faced with the revolution. Many of the well-known political philosophers were using her poetry about the revolution. In April of 1776, the author and political philosopher Thomas Paine published Wheatley's poem to Washington in the Pennsylvania Magazine. Like many other residents of Boston, Wheatley's feelings for the British regime turned from obedient admiration to ardent discourage and led to her support the revolution. The poems she wrote anticipated the future for the new republic and praised the efforts of its military leader and first president. In the poem she wrote, Celestial choir and throng in rims of light, Columbia sings a glorious toll as I write. While freedom's cause her anxious breast alarms, she flashes dreadful in refulgent arms. See mother earth of her offspring, fates bemoan. In nation's gaze it seems before unknown, see the bright beams of heaven's revolving light. Involved in sorrows and veil of night, the goddess comes, she moves divinely fair, olive and laurel bind her golden hair. Wherever shines this native of the skies, a numbered charms in recent gr graces rise. Phyllis died at the age of 31 on December 5, 1784. She was given an elegy by a fellow poet under the pen name of Horatio. It reads as follows. As if by heaven inspired did she relate the soul's grand entrance at the sacred gate. But oh, how vain the wish that friendship pays, since her own volumes are her greatest praise. <laughs>